Hi, in this video we are going to look at how enzymes work and this is the introductory video of my enzymology playlist. We very often say enzyme reacts with substrate and make the products and substrate is kind of complementary towards the enzymes active site. So in this video we are going to look at what is exactly happening while enzyme and substrates are interacting. We are going to look at the kinetic data, we are going to look at the thermodynamic and structural aspect of this interaction. So stay tuned till the end of the video. Now here is a graph which would help us to understand how enzyme and substrate work. So in the x-axis of the graph you have the reaction progression, so it's kind of like a time and in the y-axis you have free energy change. Now without any enzyme, if you add some substrate, it would be eventually become a product but it would take a lot of time. So that graph kind of looks like this, where you have the energy of the reactants as initial part and then eventually it would get converted into the product. Now the difference between the energy of the reactant and the transition state is actually the activation energy. So activation energy without the enzyme kind of look like this. But if you have an enzyme which can cat catalyze this reaction, then the graph kind of look like this. As you can quite notice that the activation energy has been reduced to start the reaction with the enzyme, right? Now, this reduction in the activation energy is a key aspect of enzyme substrate reaction because enzyme reduce the active activation energy. So what is activation energy actually? The difference between the energy levels of the ground state and the transition state can be defined as activation energy. Now the enzyme and enzyme substrate interaction actually decrease the activation energy of the react enzyme substrate reaction and moreover enzyme change the reaction rate but enzyme does not change the equilibria this is one of the most important aspect about how enzyme enzymatic reactions work now let's try to understand things in bit more details and try to understand how enzyme specificity is bring about so here is an enzyme which is binding to this particular substrate. But this particular enzyme is not going to bind with another substrate like this given here. One reason is there is a mismatch or this particular substrate is not fitting into the enzyme's active site. And in order to understand all of these aspects, we need to look at the structural aspect of these enzyme substrate interaction. And with the development of X-ray crystallographic technique, structural biology has really flourished. And looking at the enzyme substrate bound structure or the enzyme structure individually in an unbound situation and crystallizing both of these conformations and followed by doing an X-ray crystallographic technique, scientists have found out how exactly enzyme substrate works. And they figured out that there are several principles which are associated with the catalytic power and the specificity of the enzyme. So we are going to look at that in a moment. So there are two key principles. First of all, there is something called binding energy, which augments the enzyme substrate interaction. And there is something called stereospecificity of an enzyme, which is occurring due to the 3D conformation of the enzymes active site or let's say the way enzymes active site is interacting with the substrate. Now let's talk about binding energy first. So the energy that is derived from the enzyme substrate interaction, maybe it's a weak interaction, that is known as the binding energy. Binding energy is the major source of energy that is used by the enzyme to lower the activation energy. So the key aspect of the enzyme substrate reaction is enzyme reduce the activation energy for this reaction, right? And thereby augment the rate. And this is provided by the binding energy. So what exactly is the binding energy? Let's say this substrate is bound with an enzyme 
and in the active site there are several interactions non-covalent or covalent interactions are forming in the active site for example a hydrogen bond is formed between uh, a part two particular residues between these two substrate and enzyme that bond formation energy is actually contributing towards binding energy now there is not only one interaction there could be multiple different small small interactions some are hydrogen bonds some are maybe hydrophobic interactions some are maybe van der Waals interaction so all summation of all these bond formation energies would contribute to the binding energy and that has very good, important implications right now that actually gives enzyme the catalytic power and also these weak interactions are optimized in the reactions transition state and it has to be remembered that enzymes conformation the active site conformation is exactly complementary to the substrate not in the ground state but in the transition state in order to understand that let's try to visualize this process so this is the enzyme now its active site is not totally complementary to the substrate's uh, stereospecificity. So the substrate first bind a site away to the active site and there are multiple small interactions happening between the enzyme and substrate. But while the enzyme substrate reaction is going through a transition state, in that situation the, sub the conformation of the active site is also changed actually it is induced by the initial weak interactions between the enzyme and substrate and that changed the conformation of the active site such that the substrate fits nicely in the active site of the enzyme and this is the importance of the binding energy so what we learned from this is there is loose binding of enzyme and substrate in the ground state but the firm binding occurs in the transition state only which augments this process and lowers the activation energy in fact the binding energy is providing the energy to to lower the activation energy and thereby ultimately the reaction can go on and products are formed and we also learned that the optimal interaction between substrate and enzyme is only occurring in the transition state not in the ground state now that leads us to understand what are the physical factors or thermodynamic constraints in case of a reaction to occur now there are many factors which can constrain a reaction to occur and i'm going to point out few of them for example the entropy so the entropy overall is a estimation of the disorderness in kind in case of any reaction it, it also determines how is the how much is the freedom of motion of two molecules in a solution right and entropy, entropy has to be reduced and we are going to talk about it in a moment. Other than that, the solvation sh shell which is present around the substrate and the enzyme might prevent them to interact with each other optimally. And then for ultimately, the need of proper alignment of the catalytic uh, sites, like that means the enzyme's active site and the substrate is very important because this three di dimensional arrangement is what allows the enzyme substrate reaction to proceed further so let's try to understand three points one by one let's say there are a few enzymes and substrate present in this particular solution all the enzymes are marked in red and the substrate are marked in blue now see they are very dynamic and they are displaying brownian motion now if they are not settling down or they are not settling down or their entropy is reduced then what is happening then the, the probability or the likelihood that they are going to interact with each other or they are going to collide with each other is low. So first and foremost thing that the enzyme does is to reduce the entropy and the entropy reduction is actually taking place by formation of these small small interactions that is actually the binding energy is allowing the enzyme to reduce the entropy of the enzyme substrate interaction. Now Along with that, we have to understand that these enzymes and the substrates both are actually soluble in a solution, right? So they have a lot of hydration shell around it. So a lot of water molecules are actually covering up the surfaces of the enzyme and substrate. 
these covering up of the sur surface might be a little problem because if the surfaces are not open the functional groups are not open then the, then how the small interactions would be happening so these desolvation is important and desolvation problem is overcome by the energy of binding energy so the binding energy provides sufficient amount of energy which can cause desolvation and lastly the enzyme and the substrate need to be oriented properly in a three dimensional space such that the optimal interaction between the enzymes active site and the substrate can take place all these three factors are governing the rate of the enzyme substrate reactions and that is how actually binding energy augments the reaction rate by lowering activation energy so we pretty much understand how enzyme and substrate work not really because this is the first and foremost and the easiest explanation towards the enzyme substrate interaction but there are more to it because there are many other molecules apart from the sub substrate which can bind to the enzyme such as allosteric regulators these allosteric regulators can also change the active site conformation and augment substrate binding or prevent substrate binding so these kind of fine regulations of enzymatic functions are also there now in this video i'm not going to talk about allosteric regulation i have a different video for allosteric regulation so don't forget to check my enzymology playlist where i have pretty much covered a lot of topics regarding enzymology and enzyme kinetics so don't forget to check out this if you like this video give it a quick thumbs up and don't forget to like share and subscribe thank you